Hi and welcome to a new video on my channel, a new video on YouTube. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Jessica Ziwa and um, this is my YouTube channel. If you're new, yes, I've already said welcome and subscribe. <laughs> Today's video is about how I got how I got all A stars in my IGCSE science classes, so biology, chemistry, and physics. And I'm just gonna share with you guys what I did to get those grades. Let's hop right in. So what something crucial that you need to do if you want to get an A star in your um, science classes is you need to take your end of unit slash end of chapter tests and quizzes you need to take them seriously like really really seriously I know a lot of people that say I'm just not going to study for that test or it's not that important especially if, since there's no there's no such thing as a GPA in a lot of English or British schools um, it there's just not that motivation to do well on those tests but I really want to encourage you to be really serious about those tests because they really help you to know the information before the exam and if, even if it's the beginning of the year and your exam is in eight months doing well on that one test eight months before your exams can actually gain you marks on that exam because you'll remember the information better if you don't do well on that end of chapter slash end of unit test you'll know that you're not that strong in that specific chapter so then you can go back and you can really restudy it not so intensely but you could even mark it off on like a paper on the side that you know you'll have so that like three months before your exams you know okay in biology i'm not that good in the coordination and response chapter let me go back and let me look at it better let me look at what i felt from my end of unit test keep your end of unit test number two is make good notes it's really really valuable to have good notes for when you're studying so i know a lot of people don't really like writing or doing just the most for their notes and i understand that i understand that notes aren't for everyone but i think that if you're sitting down and you're spending time to your textbook and making your notes making them handwritten can really really help you to retain that information and it is proven that writing your notes yourself can help you retain information better so making your notes is really really important and i would advise you to take them in physics chemistry biology that's a something that i didn't do that well in chemistry and physics because writing notes isn't that that easy in those subjects but in biology especially i wrote so many notes i just needed that and if i could have i would have done more notes in chemistry and physics i wish i had done that number three draw your diagrams if you're in biology and you have to label the parts of the eye draw the eye take the extra five or ten minutes to draw that eye because then that will just enter your memory a bit more that okay this is the cornea this is the lens this is the retina draw it and label it then and don't just look at the textbook and then label it what i like to do is i draw the picture uh, draw the diagram and then i don't look at the textbook and I try to label the parts without looking at the textbook. And of course, I'm not gonna write it down in pen before I check, but then I'll check, okay, this is right, or oh, I labeled this wrong. So I, while I'm making my notes, I'm studying in a way. Number four, understand your content. This is extremely, extremely important and I stress this. You cannot just expect to get an A star on a subject without understanding the content. Yes, sometimes, especially in physics, there's some, for me personally, if there's some things that I didn't really understand because it's just not my subject, but I, I go on YouTube and I, I search for videos that explain, explain, explain it to me more. You need to understand the content and you need to go to your teacher and say, look, I don't get this. Can you please, can you please explain it to me again? Please understand your content. You cannot get good grades with, from just your memory. Number five, use your teachers. You're paying school fees for a reason. If you're not paying school fees, good for you, but you're still going to school for a reason. Use your teachers. They're there to help you. They're a resource. You shouldn't just be in their class for, I don't know, three hours a week and then not use them ever again. Use them. Ask them to mark your extra work when you're doing past papers and you don't want to mark it yourself. Ask them, hey sir, hey madam, can you please mark my, my work? Because it's really important to get their input and say, okay, 
miss, I got a 70%, why? Why do you think I got that? And then she'll say, okay, I think it's you need to focus on this, this, and this. Number six, for the sciences, you need to do past papers <laughs> from morning to evening. You, those are your best friend. If you want to get A stars, you need to do past papers from 2011, 2012, 13, 14, all the numbers you can find, you just need to do them. If it's repetitive, write down the, the types of questions that are always coming, like in a biology exam. There are not too many that always appear, but there can be some that appear. And if you do find those, especially if you're not doing CIE, but you're doing AQA and other things, you need to write those down, put them aside and just really know that basic information. But you need to do your past papers. They're, they're your best friend. You just need to do them. I did so many past papers. I really asked my teachers for booklets on booklets. They print a booklet that's this thick and I do it in two weeks and say, sir, can you give me another one? Just keep, keep, keep on doing it. And you can even repeat past papers. Like if you do a past paper in November and then let's say it's February and it's, yeah, it's been a couple of months. You say, okay, I'm going to redo this paper and see, did I get a better mark? Don't throw your past papers away. Always mark them yourself or your teacher marks them, get them back, keep them in a folder. Number seven, use YouTube. YouTube is your friend 60% of the time because YouTube is really good, but you can also be sucked into the hole of, okay, the next recommended video is a vlog and you're really tempted to watch it. Don't go down that rabbit hole. But really just, if you wanna go on YouTube and you wanna use it for study purposes, use it for that. Go onto YouTube and say, I'm just going to use this, uh, I'm just gonna use this next hour on YouTube for study purposes only. You also don't have to use your own account. You can also go in incognito, I think that's how you say the word, um, or you can just use YouTube without logging in so you don't really get recommended things that you're, you really like to watch. But um, some, YouTube, um, some YouTube channels that I really like to watch for all the sciences, uh, yeah, mostly chemistry and physics, not that much biology. Um, Science with Hazel is one of them. She also does past papers that you can like watch her do the past papers. Um, Cambridge in five minutes. Uh, Christopher Thornton. And my favorite one, Free Science Lessons. This guy is the best. He does chemistry prim primarily, but I think he also does some physics. And he's just, he's, I think he's a really good teacher and I really enjoyed his videos and they taught me a lot. Number eight, the learner guide. I don't know if other schools do this, but um, my chemistry teacher, she printed out a learner guide for my grade, uh, for my class, and it was amazing. So the learner guide is basically the syllabus, but it has it like a checkbox um, at the end of every objective that you need to know. And so what I did is that I had the learner guide and I, when I was studying for my exam, I would check off every box and I'd read it and say, wait, I don't really know this or I know this, I'm just gonna check it off. And that is extremely, extremely important. If you do not have a learner guide yet, I would really advise you to ask your teacher to print it off for you or you could find it yourself even. But make sure that it's for the right syllabus because you could, by mistake, print a learner guide that isn't for your syllabus. So I would check with your teacher and ask, is this the right learner guide for our syllabus? Number nine, something that I always did um, when I was answering past papers is I'd always look at the marks awarded. So let's say I'm, I'm doing a chemistry paper and then there's four marks awarded for a question. I'd always make sure to have four different points. Even if it's hard to find those points, find them from somewhere. For J, I just come up, come up with it. From my biology exam in 2019, a couple months ago, that exam was so difficult. And at some points, I was really just forging information. I was picking it from corners. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna put this together and try and make an answer. And I did get an A star in that. So I, I really suggest that you look at the marks and that you just bring some type of answer to it. So those are mainly my points for all the sciences. Of course, they're quite a bit different, the biochem, physics, um, and if you want separate um, specific videos on each of those subjects, please just comment it down below so that I know, because I'm not sure if you want that or not, if there's anyone who's interested in that. Um, but if you are, I will gladly make a more specific video with more information and 
um, more examples that I can give you. For biology, the content is key. You need to know the parts of things. You need to just know the content. For chemistry, you need to memorize. Physics, formulas, you need to know them. You need to know, you need to know your numbers. You have to be comfortable with calculating. Just You need to practice, practice, practice. Well, that was it really. I hope that helped somebody. It, I did try to format it, format it in a way and I wrote down the things, but if it's a bit unclear to you, just comment down below and I can answer some of your questions. And please, if you want to see any other videos on how I studied for math, I might make a video on how I studied for math. I also got an A star in that. Or English, Literature and Language, I can also make a video on how I got A stars in that. And um, you can just, yeah, comment that down below and I'll definitely listen to what you guys want. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like and comment and yeah. Okay, bye.